great. Good morning. Good morning. It is good to be gathered in the sanctuary of God's creation. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this special service of confirmation, even with the squinty eyes and, you know, all the things that come with being outdoors on a sunny day. We're really grateful for the opportunity to celebrate with our young people and all of you who love them as they affirm their baptism and, you know, step into a new um, piece of this journey of faith that we share together. Uh, a note about masks, because we are outdoors and because the science is clear that outdoor transmission is like very, very, very unlikely, you're welcome to remove your masks as you're in your spaces here if you'd like to. Um, just for folks' as comfort and safety, we'll ask that when you get up to leave uh, that you um, will invite you to put your masks back on just because we don't ask for vaccination cards at the door and want to just make sure that folks uh, feel as comfortable as they, as they can um, here in worship. Mm, trying to think if there are any other announcements. I don't think there are. We'll do our best, uh, Pastor Ben and I, to guide you um, confirmands and families through how this service will look. There will be portions of the worship where we'll ask our confirmands to stand where you are and to uh, make some affirmation statements of faith. And then another portion in the service where we will invite um, our confirmation students and their families to come up together for individual blessings. Um, but we'll walk you through all of this as best as we can. Okay, let's take just a couple of moments to ground ourselves in this space and we'll begin with a prayer. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, you bind the baptized as one people built upon Christ, the sure foundation. Continue your work in the lives of these young people who affirm their baptisms today in the presence of this assembly. As we celebrate together with these families, we ask that you look with mercy upon your church. Heal the wounds that divide its members. Rid it of all arrogance. Inspire its teaching. And strengthen its witness to your suffering love poured out for the world in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you. you. In the kind of late fall time, uh, just about every year I've been a pastor here at Grace, we've taken our Genesis youth on a retreat to Lutheran Outdoor Ministries Center, L-O-M-C. It's about 
hour to two hours away, depending on how fast you drive. And we have gone out there a number of years, and every year we do a lot of the same things. And one of the things I love doing is going out to the low ropes course at LOMC. And it usually goes exactly the same way, no matter what group of kids we have, no matter what time it is, no matter whether it's raining or not, we get out there and the very first thing we come across is this little tightrope strung about a foot and a half above the ground, some steel cable. And every single year, all of the kids, is, right away, they start trying to make it across the tightrope. And uh, a few of them get a little ways, but um, to this point, <clears throat> me, to this point, we've never had any, any actual tightrope walkers in Genesis. Nobody has ever just gone up there and made it all the way across. And I'm including myself in this because I'm just like the kids. I go and I try and make it the first time, every time, with all of them. I'm trying to make my way across the tightrope, one side to the other. And nobody can do it. We all fall off to one side or another. We try a couple of times. And then what happens is really kind of interesting. What happens after that is uh, some of the kids start to notice that there's, there's a second tightrope that's kind of going at an angle off from the other one. And they realize if, if one person's on the second tightrope, you can kind of use your hands and you can balance and you can get a little further down than you would be able to on your own. A few others start to notice that there's a, another rope way up high and a few feet above in the air and you can you can grab a rope onto that and you can have something to stabilize yourself as you're making your way across. And eventually uh, a few of them start working together. They, they you know learn from the leader that they can do some spotting and we go through this whole process and eventually each and every single kid who goes finds a way to make it from one side of the tightrope to the other without touching the ground. It's an amazing thing because, frankly, some of you are not that coordinated. But they all make it. They find different ways to help each other. They have different ways of stabilizing. You know, they're using, like, the sweatshirt hoodie that is, like, a way to throw it to somebody else. There's all these unique and creative ways for getting the whole group from one side to the other. Nobody can... But somehow working together, we're able to, to get it done. And I think that's kind of the idea that Jesus had in his mind when he was talking to his disciples on this day. You see, Jesus knew that soon he wasn't going to be around. Soon he was going to be arrested and taken away to the cross. And the disciples were going to have to figure out how to live, how to continue on, how to follow in the path that Jesus set for them. And Jesus knows these guys. He knows these people. He knows that not a single one of them can do it all on their own. So the last commandment he gives to them is to love one another. It's to care for one another. It's to be with one another, to work together, because that's what it takes to follow Jesus. Not any one of us, at least not anyone I've come across, can follow Jesus all by themselves any more than we can make it across that tightrope without any kind of can't hold without any kind of person there to help us. Our job is to love one another because by doing that, we can do more than any one of us can do on our own. When we love one another, we find we can make it across that tightrope, and when we stumble, we have someone to grab onto. And when someone else stumbles, they can grab onto us. Each and every year, we've been doing this with our group and each and every year, it somehow draws the group closer together. It's hard to see someone as a stranger when you're literally holding on to them, trying to fall, not to fall over. Something about working together draws us closer, helps us to love one another, and helps us to work together to follow Jesus. That's what it means to be a Christian. That's what it means to be a church. It means loving one another so that we can do more than we could ever do on our own. At the very core of what it means to follow Jesus is this commandment. He says it again and again. Jesus tells his disciples, he tells his followers to love one another. And that's what God has called us to do. That's what we try and do in this place. That's what we try and do in our lives, to love and care for one another so that when we stumble and we can't stay on that narrow tightrope, there's someone there to catch us. And that when someone close to us stumbles, we can be there as well. As all of you are gathering here, preparing to be confirmed, this is what you're being called into. You're being called into being full and complete members of Grace Church. We're going to be calling on you to help us when we stumble. And we're going to promise to be there 
when you need someone to hold on to. We're going to try. And we're going to try and love one another and follow in the path of Jesus. You might not always get it right. There's going to be a lot of wobbles and bobbles along the way. But together, we can keep taking those steps down that narrow path and go further than we ever imagined. So are you ready? All right. I present those who desire to make public affirmation of their baptism. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these sisters and brothers whom you have made by your own whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Confirmands, I'll invite you to stand right where you are. And together, I will ask you to um, follow our liturgy here and share in the responses to the questions that I'm about to ask you. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Friends, do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day he took the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confirmands, you have made public profession of your faith. You intend to continue to live in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God, and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If so, please answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. And now, people of God, do you promise to support these sisters and brothers and pray for them in their life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Confirmands, I invite you to sit down and we'll invite families one at a time to come stand up in front of the font for a, a blessing. We'll have you put your hand on the back or the shoulder of your confirmand as uh, Pastor Heidi and I alternate giving a special confirmation blessing. Us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in Anthony the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. 
give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in Alita the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in Jack the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in Kellen the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in Daniel the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. I'll again invite our confirmands to stand and for the rest of us in the congregation to um, use the words of response as we welcome them in celebration. Let us rejoice with these sisters and brothers in Christ. We, we rejoice, rejoice with you in, in the life of baptism. baptism. Together, Together we, will we will give thanks and praise to God and, and proclaim the good news to all the world. The world. Amen. We welcome these new full members of Grace and the Christian community. You may be seated as we move toward communion. As we get ready for communion, friends, if you've not uh, had the joy of using one of these little snackable communions, <laughs> um, they're a little bit tricky, and so we're going to do some orientation beforehand. These are all juice, um, so if that's important to you, just know that they're all juice. On top of this little packet, there's a very thin layer of cellophane, which, you know, Pastor Leland jokes that he used to be a neurosurgeon, and um, this is more complicated than some of the operations he performed in that career. So if you want to get it started, go ahead, um, but we'll, we'll uh, save the wafer and commune together toward the end of the communion liturgy, and then you lift the sort of foil piece underneath there to access the juice when it's time, okay? So just be prepared for that. Pastor Ben reminded us that um, when we gather 
as church, when we gather in community, part of what we do is hold one another up, help us find our way when we are stumbling, help us get across the tightrope that is life with um, all of the support and the help that we need. And we come around this table for Holy Communion, this table, which is Christ's table, to be strengthened in order to be able to hold one another up in this life of faith. And so we'll come around this table today, which extends to all of you here, but which also extends to the communion tables in churches around the world. And you are part of that community that extends far beyond this place as we hold one another up, standing on the firm foundation that is Christ. And so we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Confident in Jesus' presence with us, we pray together the Lord's Prayer in whatever language or version or translation happens to be closest to your heart. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God, which we will take together. So I invite you now to lift this cellophane, and together we'll hold up the wafers. This is the body of Christ given for you. And when you're ready to open the juice, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. And now I invite you uh, to bow your heads for the blessing. May Almighty God, the one who created the universe, build within you a faith filled with hope, joy, and love. May God, who sent the Holy Spirit to rest upon Jesus at his baptism in the Jordan River, pour out that Spirit upon you, who remember and affirm your baptism into Christ this day. May the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. We're going to sing our sending song, not alone. That you will be with me when I'm standing in the fire, I will not be overcome through the valley of the shadow. I will not fear. I am not alone. 
is breaking through. Dark night will not overtake me. I am pressing into Serve the risen Christ. Thanks to God. Hallelujah.